questions that I ask uh, the panel participants are basically, in what, in their opinion, what are the most important uh, channels in which financial crisis, systemic risk, financial fragility is created and then transmitted to the rest of the system? And then, what is the regulation? How should be the regulation? What is the new, the good aspects and the, and the bad aspects of the new regulation? The problem with the instruments that are being introduced is that they they narrowly define the different elements in the bank, what's liquid, what's not liquid, what's a stable deposit, what's not a stable deposit. In defining what's liquid, liquid and not, you affect the behavior of those particular markets where the assets are determined by the regulator to be liquid, affecting the supply, the demand, and the price. And when you introduce in the regulation what's a stable source of funding or what are committed or not committed funds by the bank, you affect the business models of the banks, sometimes with unintended consequences. We, we have avoided the problems we had with uh, all these liquidity controls, higher capital, I doubt it very much. No, I, I'm, I'm quite sure we would have had it in exactly the same way. But perhaps if uh, some of these uh, investors would have, households would have been better informed, perhaps if the Bank of Spain would have had direct evidence of what these people were thinking would happen with their house, maybe we would have a much better idea about whether we have a bubble or not, <clears throat> because the problem is that policymakers never want to break a bubble. So something is changing. The size is becoming bigger, Business is becoming more concentrated. These guys are becoming more complex, and we're struggling precisely with the issue with how to regulate this changing landscape when it comes to banking. And I think the regulators are reacting to this by basically increasing the discretionality uh, in the hands of uh, bank supervisors. So something that worries me enormously is that the next crisis that we're going to have, and I can assure you, we'll have another big banking crisis because they come all the time. Uh, you know, will catch a lot of these regulators with very little experience. They just don't have it. The FDIC has no experience whatsoever in handling something like Lima. In the Financial Times, there was a little graph that said there is, that countries are buying back their debts. Debts that used to be international are becoming national again. Why is this happening? This is a very big change that has happened in the sovereign debt markets. Maturity remains constant, but in the moment that the spreads shoot up, suddenly we decide to buy back our debt. So why would the domestic residents want to have an asset that gives a low payoff when your marginal utility is very high, when the marginal value of this debt is very high? There is an event that is called default. If this event of default happens, with some probability, the country will exit the union and will impose capital controls. If this probability exists, immediately the debt becomes more attractive to the domestics than to the foreigners. What's needed for financial regulation is a holistic approach in the sense that capital requirements, uh, liquidity requirements and disclosure or transparency requirements have to be thought together. So the regulator or Basel typically uh, should not think about the optimal, what should be the optimal capital requirement, but think about it together because they are connected. And it's not the same, and in fact it's not even the same uh, depending on the degree of liberalization of competition in the, in, in the system. So more liberalization, more competition would be more solvency requirement. Uh, there is a trade-off, so the more the regulator can observe in a, in a, in a clear way the, uh, the asset risk position of the, of the bank, the less this will be needed.